try and go slow. Uh, again, as I said, the idea is uh, we we practice not only our information systems, our the, the, the let's say the the discipline or the field that we'll be discussing, but we also um, practice our English. But if it at any time you 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 feel that you have to go back to your own language, uh, I understand uh, enough uh, Spanish. I I speak Portuguese. Uh, most Brazilians understand Spanish to some extent if you don't speak it too fast. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how how good you understand uh, Portuguese, but I will even when people ask questions in in Portuguese if they feel that they, they have to do that, uh, I will try and translate it to English, okay? Um, I think we'll have a few more people joining, uh, but maybe it's time for us to formally start uh, this. Uh, I have to explain you what the research seminars are. This is the third uh, version or, or third issue of information system or research seminars in information systems about uh, Three years ago, we were in a an AMSIS conference. AMSIS is the Americas Conference in Information Systems. We were in an AMSIS and we thought we were discussing among several Latin American professors and students, uh, and we were saying that we we should interact more among ourselves. Uh, we had little contact, and then we came up with the idea of having research seminars, in which researchers from Latin America could talk to other Latin Americans, uh, researchers and students, uh, you will soon have the opportunity to present yourselves, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and so that we could improve the quality of our own information systems community, right? I know that, uh, for example, uh, Antonio is from Panama, right? Uh, I don't know, uh, who else is who else is from Panama there? All right, right. all right, all right. That's it. Okay. I'm from to Panama. Panama. Who else? Uh, Doris, where are you from? Uh, Panama. Panama as well. Panama. Okay. Uh, Elena, we know that is from uh, from Brazil. Rogério is also from Brazil. Uh, uh, we have Maria there. Maria, where are you from? Panama. Panama as well. Good. A yeah, good representation of Panama. Uh, we love that because of one reason that will become clear very soon. In fact, I can already tell you, next year we will have a huge conference on information systems, the, the, Ameri the AMSIS, the America's Conference of Information Systems, happening in Panama, right? And so it's really good that we have uh, uh, a lot of Panaman Panamanians here because we want to try and, and make sure that that conference in Panama is a great opportunity for us Latin Americans to show uh, our own, um, you know, the, 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 the work that we do in information systems uh, in that conference. Uh, who else uh, is there? Uh, Mari, uh, is, is it Mari that you say? Mari Uskamaita. Where are you from, Mari? Or Mary, I don't know. I don't know if everyone if everyone has a a, a mic in your computers. Uh, it, it's good that you do, right? Uh, because that helps us uh, uh, with our interaction. But if you don't, never mind. Just uh, you can always write something on the chat, uh, and uh, and the chat is also a possibility for us. Uh, see, uh, 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 Marina was telling us that uh, on, on the chat that she, she couldn't open her, her mic uh, right now uh, as well. Um, and, and then we have uh, Christian Murillo. Uh, Murillo? Uh, where are you? From? Oh, Ma Maris is say, saying hello there. She will probably tell us where she's from. Christian, where are you from? Panama. Panama as well, great. Uh, and then uh, we have there Carolina Silveira. Where she's the name is very Brazilian, but which part of Brazil are you from, Carolina? Hi everyone, I'm from Uberlândia here in Brazil. Uberlândia, all right, okay. So the the people from Minas Gerais uh, are very active here. And now we have also Flavio. Uh, Flavio, which part of Brazil are you from? 
I'm from Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. All right. So, several uh, um, different states of Brazil, several different... Uh, well, well, for now, uh, um, I, uh, I think Panama, we, uh, I, I, I believe that we will also have uh, some colleagues from Peru. I'm not sure yet. Uh, and as I was saying, uh, uh, three years ago, we started the research seminars in a way that uh, was basically um, inviting each, each week we would invite uh, a professor or a, a PhD student or a master student from one of uh, uh, our universities in, in Latin America to give us a talk on the, the topic that they were studying. Right in that idea of interacting more among ourselves, uh, and uh, by doing that, uh, also um, uh, improving the quality of, of of our own research. And I, I will talk about a lot about research because I am a researcher myself. I do research in, in, besides teaching information systems. I also do research in information systems. Right. Uh, some of you, uh, another th thing that I didn't ask, uh, we, we, in, th in this group here, we will have possibly uh, PhD students, right? Students that are t uh, doing their doctoral um, um, work uh, in information systems. We will have uh, graduate students. In English, this, this word is a little tricky because in Portuguese and Spanish, when we think about uh, graduado, it, it refers to to the course that we do in in what the Ameri the North Americans would call the undergraduate studies, right? Uh, so graduate uh, students in, in a ma uh, graduate students in English is master or doctor uh, doctorate. So we, we have also some master students here, and we also have uh, we will also have uh, uh, I believe uh, people that are not taking their masters or that are still undergrads and they're also welcome because our uh, the, the reason for this is to improve the quality of what we do regardless of the level in which we are right now okay of course we will be focusing more on uh, helping um, uh, doctorate students and master students in improving the quality of their work but in most of our countries we also have what we call um, scientific uh, initiation or here in Brazil we call it Iniciação Científica uh, which is uh, where undergraduate students start having some experience with research as well. So the focus of what we'll be doing here is research but at the same time I believe that uh, whatever we discuss here uh, is very interesting uh, also for what we call practitioners in information systems, uh, which means people that uh, are now, let's say, uh, uh, somehow relating to, to universities, but their focus is to go and work in the industry, in, 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 let's say, in the, in, the, in the real world of business, right? And the reason why information systems is such a relevant um, field even for practitioners is because information systems is the the area that tries to connect um, computer science and other well the, the, and, and, and whatever uh, benefit computers can bring to uh, to organizations to companies and to our society in general right um, next uh, uh, next Monday we will be discussing what information systems means um, in, in, in a much more detail because it may even happen that for some of you information systems is just a different name for computer science or for computer engineering or for software engineering uh, I don't know there are so many different labels that uh, connect let's say humans to technology these days uh, that it's very comprehensible that we are a little uh, messed up a little confused with 
uh, the definitions of uh, you know what we are studying and uh, information systems basically uh, tries to be that discipline or that field that connects uh, technology and information technology let's say uh, with real needs of humans right with real needs of um, um, humans uh, either to do their, their their jobs better to to be more efficient in producing whatever they do that's what organizations do but also and I think that's very important these days also in the way that they carry out uh, their lives right we uh, nowadays we all have I, I say that we all have a computer in our pocket or in fact not even in our pocket in our hands most of the time that is our mobile phone uh, studying the how we relate to this technology to, to this gadget to this uh, well, technological artifact that is in, either in our pocket or in our hands all the time is a matter of interest, is a subject that is uh, of interest to information systems because I don't know how you feel, uh, but I have the feeling that the fact that, that I have a, a computer with me all the time makes me a different person than I would be if I had to rely uh, on my memory or if I had to rely on my knowledge for all the decisions that I have to take in life. Right? Nowadays, having a cell phone in my hands allows me to, at any time, to decide, well, I don't know about that very well, but let me very quickly find out. And then I find out by Googling whatever I wish, and then making decisions that are, I cannot say that, if, that they are better informed, because they may be better informed or uh, worth, worthly in, informed than they would be without Google there to work as a, I call the great oracle, right? Trying to tell us the truth, the truth of life. Uh, anyway, oh, Adon is there with us as well. Great to see you there, Adon. I, had, I hadn't seen you yet. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, um, one thing, I, I know that some of you are, uh, are having problems and, and cannot open your mics. Uh, it may be possible also that some of you cannot open your cameras uh, due to all different uh, reasons, bandwidth or whatever, uh, or even because you are you know, doing this from 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 work, from from places where you, you can't do it. But it would be great for me uh, if uh, at least some of you could open, it, could have your cameras uh, open. Uh, I know that we are not very the the the, the, the tradition of uh, using Google Meet and and. Uh, what else? Or Zoom and, and all of that is people keep, uh, you know, um, it's hiding beh behind either a letter or, 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 or a picture. Uh, but it's it's much easier if I can see you because I, I, I can figure out if you're understanding what I'm saying. Uh, so uh, I would invite those of you who, who can open their, 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 their cameras there to keep their cameras uh, open whenever whenever you, 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 you feel you can do it because it makes it much easier for me and it will make it more interactive as well for uh, whoever uh, is here. So if any of you can open your cameras, I, I, I thank you for, for, for that. Again, I understand that that sometimes um, uh, isn't possible, so do not worry about it. Um, uh, but maybe that's something that uh, you could also think of for the next uh, meetings. Um, uh, if, you, if you can do it from a place where you can have um, your camera open, uh, that, that makes this, I, I think it's a much more fruitful um, uh, conversation if I'm not just talking to uh, a computer here, if, I, if I'm seeing who's at the other end. Okay. Um, all right, uh, several of you uh, came here. Well, I, I know some of you came here because you already knew about the research seminars the way they were in previous years. Um, some of you uh, came here, and I, I, I thank Donna for... for Donna has been a, a keen advertiser of uh, the research seminars in previous years, and, and this is not the first time that we have a lot of... Panamanians here with us. Uh, Dona has is, is a good advertiser of the the research seminars there in in, in Panama. Thank you, thank you for that, uh, Dona. 
uh, and, uh, and, and and so this it's great to have uh, our Panamanian uh, colleagues here uh, uh, and, and and as I said uh, the idea here is to challenge ourselves and do it do this in English I know that in many cases that's still not what we are used to do in our in our universities but I can also give you the testimony of uh, students that were here uh, in previous um, previous years uh, that at the end they said well you know uh, I learned a lot about information systems uh, but it was also good because it helped me improve my quality of um, even well not maybe not as much writing but uh, listening to and understanding uh, uh, English and I feel more comfortable for example to take parts or to participate in a conference in English now so I hope that this is also going to be something uh, good for for us here and uh, I should remind you that whenever you have questions or ideas if you feel that you can express yourselves better in your own language feel free to do that right just ask and and, and by the way asking here means just open your mic and ask um, if you if you ask through the the chat uh, I may be my, my wife keeps telling me that I am monotask I can do only one thing at once right so sometimes I don't even notice that someone asked something in the chat uh, if that happens and if, if some some other people in the, in the here in, in our group notice that someone has asked something there and you can open your mic and say Alex there is a there is this uh, there is this uh, question or there is this comment or whatever in the in, in the chat I will be happy to to answer that and and again do that in Portuguese English Spanish the language well not the language you wish if you do it in Mandarin I will not be able to understand it uh, but uh, at least do it in, in your native uh, language uh, and assuming that your native language is either, either Portuguese or, or Spanish here and I'll be happy to, to address that. Um, going back to, to, to uh, I, 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 I keep referring to the, the research seminars of previous years uh, and, and now I have to explain that we're, we're going to do it differently this year. Uh, in previous years as I, as I had already mentioned it was each, each time we brought a different person here to talk about their specific topic. We may have a, a, a few people that we will, we will invite to talk to, to, to us about specific topics, but, uh, but this year we have a different challenge again, because next year we'll have uh, AMSIS, the America's Conference in Information Systems happening in Panama. Uh, we, in our Latin American information systems uh, community decided that we wanted to have more people uh, engaged with uh, that conference or at least engaged with the, the conferences that we have at, at high level uh, in information systems uh, in the world and so our main purpose here will be to try and help you uh, develop some research right regardless of the level in which you're doing it doctoral students will be uh, research at doctoral level uh, master students uh, will do it at a, an intermediate uh, level and uh, undergraduates will do maybe their first research uh, uh, let's say academic research uh, uh, project and our idea is to push those projects to a better stand and hopefully make them uh, uh, acceptable make them um, possible uh, for presentation thank you Josie for the uh, for being there and, and thank you for having your camera open I'm, I'm trying to convince these guys here to open their cameras as well it's it's much easier uh, for someone who's talking to know that there's someone at the other end nodding and say yes I'm understanding what you're saying uh, thank you Rogério for also opening your camera uh, it, it makes my life easier I I, I, uh, I, I I can assure you that it's it's much easier to talk to people than to talk to to images on on our screen again and I can I have to keep repeating this I respect those that cannot do it uh, but uh, whenever it's possible for you keep your cameras open and of course when you're going to have lunch and and, and this uh, notice that this uh, um, um, 
this class of ours, uh, I'll call it class, right? Uh, although it's the research seminars is a set of, uh, you know, uh, talks. Uh, um, they they will happen in a time that uh, well some of uh, for the for the Panamanians I think they're two hours uh, behind us so it's it's early, very early in the morning uh, for here in Brazil it will get to lunchtime so of course if you're having lunch then it, you you turn off your camera because we don't want to to see you eating there while we're we're trying to focus uh, but uh, for all of the others whenever you can keep your cameras um, uh, open uh, it will make it easier so. Our challenge is going to be, uh, and I hope that you are all uh, good with that, is we will try to develop during the next uh, three or four months, we will try to develop some uh, research. Some of you already have your field of uh, your, your topic of research, and then it's just focusing on that. Uh, others will have to pick a topic uh, in information systems uh, and you, we will be polishing uh, your ideas and helping you turn that into an academic paper. Into a, and, and when I call academic paper, it may sound, and, and it is an academic paper, is uh, very academic in the way it's written, uh, but we want you to be able to have a paper that if you submit to a conference like AMSIS, or to a conference like ISLA, some of you were, were there with us uh, at ISLA last week, the Information Systems in Latin America conference, uh, you have at least good chances of having your paper accepted to be presented at the conference. Right? I have to tell you, good chances because we never know. Uh, there are papers that we write and, and sometimes uh, it's the best paper, we, we think it's the best paper we've ever written and it gets rejected. Right, it's it's part of the the let's say it's part of the business of submitting papers, knowing that sometimes they are rejected. But what we want to do is reduce the probability of a paper being rejected. Right, uh, and 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 for those of you, for, for some of you, this may be a mystery. Why paper being rejected? What 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 is Alex talking about? Uh, for, for those of you who are getting into this, let's say, business of writing an academic paper, uh, and uh, well, basically, uh, our our system of let's say uh, it's almost like, uh, for example, if you go to a if you want to get into a party, uh, but you weren't invited. Right? You get there to the door of the place, and there is this very strong guy there saying, "No, you cannot get in." Right, uh, that's what we usually call the gatekeepers. Right, they're there to keep the gates, uh, so that those who are allowed it go in, and those who are who have not been invited are kept out. We want to make sure that you are invited. Uh, we want to make sure that you can go past those gatekeepers. We do have gatekeepers in academia. Right, it's a it's uh, it's someone's task to say, well, this is good work. This is not good enough to be in our conference. This is not good enough to be in our uh, journal. Journal is uh, an academic um, uh, periodical. Uh, those, what, what, what does satisfy those gatekeepers? What makes them happy when you get to the, let's say, to the entrance of the party? And what will make, what will, uh, make them allow you in? basically a good paper right and then what, what our journey here will be to find out what a good paper is and what we can do to make our papers better but I cannot I, I cannot promise you that uh, we will learn a lot of information systems because this is our topic right we'll be discussing information systems as a topic but at the same time I will be uh, pushing you towards uh, writing uh, your a paper uh, in information systems, okay. Um, so uh, uh, again, for those who are, we, we, in Portuguese we have this term, cair de paraquedas, right? If if there is anyone who parachuted into this uh, place and say, what am I doing here? Why is this guy asking me to write an academic paper? I thought I was coming to a class, and now he's telling me that there is work to be done. Yes. Uh, well, the class is 
about information systems. We will start differentiating information systems from, from other uh, fields of uh, research. Uh, by the way, I know that uh, Donna is in that, in that uh, process of, of understanding what we call information systems, right, Donna? She's, she's been around with, uh, with the information systems community for the last uh, two or three years. She's writing her, um, her academic work on information systems. No, but but she, she, she told me that in, in Panama, uh, many people, uh, even professors in, in universities, do not know the difference between computer systems, or oh, sorry, information systems, uh, computer science, computer engineering. Uh, and I can tell you here in Brazil, the same happens. We, uh, in, in my department, which is the Applied Computing Department of the, the Technical Federal University of Paraná. Uh, I can assure you, if I ask some of our best professors there, what, the, what, what is information systems? And they say, well, information systems is these guys that do not know if they are computer scientists or business people. They're sort of in the middle of the way. I don't really know exactly what they do. Uh, in fact, uh, there is this dilemma for for students in undergraduate studies. This, this dilemma to choose: What am I going to, to do of my career? Am I going to be an engineer, or am I going to be a bachelor in information systems? Many times here in Brazil, students choose to be engineers simply because their parents, and maybe that also happens in your countries, their parents told them you have a better life if you are either a medical doctor a lawyer or, or an engineer, right? And then they say, well, an a bachelor in information systems is none of those three, so I better choose to become a computer engineer or something, right? Uh, well, it's crazy if you become a computer engineer simply because you like that title, engineer, right? Uh, but many universities even uh, noticing that the parents want their kids to study engineering uh, or even that the market prefers engineers. They don't know what, what, what the difference is, but they prefer engineers simply because they are engineers. They end up calling the course, a, a course, uh, what, what, they, they name it engineering somehow, right? Ingenieria de sistemas, right? Systems engineering, for example, I would say that is probably something that is closer. It would be fairer to describe as information systems then as computer engineering or whatever, right? But uh, if we want to, 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 I mean, to become uh, good information systems professionals, uh, regardless of if we're going to be practitioners in the industry or professionals as professors, we have to understand the difference. We have to understand what information systems is, right? This is something that we will be dealing with in this uh, program here, right? I'm, I, I, I promise you that you will have a very clear idea of what information systems is and what information systems is not. Very differently to many professors in good universities around the world that still have that messed up in their, their own minds, right? Uh, in addition to that, we will together figure out what a good paper is so that we can, uh, it's not that we can fool the gatekeepers, right? So that we can please the gatekeepers uh, in our field, considering that the gatekeepers are the editors of journals or the people that are responsible for scientific committees in, in conferences, right? Am I talking Greek here, or does this make sense to, to you? Is this something, uh, are, are these things that you would like to, 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 to study? Uh, and, uh, and, and again, uh, I myself many times have problems with the gatekeepers. I am the gatekeeper sometimes, right? There are situations in which I, I am in the position of being that guard that is there to say, no, you cannot get, you cannot get into the party because your paper is not good enough. And many times I'm at the other side where I'm trying to crash into the party. I'm trying to, to, to get into the, 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 to the party and people are saying, no, your paper is not good enough. Uh, so 
what makes a paper a good paper? This is another challenge that we'll have during this next three or four months. Uh, and hopefully, for those of you who stick to it and, and who are willing to learn what information systems is and uh, write a, a good paper uh, in information systems, I, I, I know some of you already know this. Again, we, we, we have a, a, different, a very mixed audience here. Some people that are in their doctorate programs, some people that are in master programs, and as I said, some undergrads here. Each one will will be pushed to where they can go, right? Uh, but the idea is, we have, for, for all of us, the idea is what do we have to do to please the gatekeepers so that they say, yes, welcome to our party, right? Um, so, well, uh, uh, having, having said that as an introduction to the, to, to the course and say, we have two main purposes, learn about information systems, learn about topics that are interesting to information systems uh, uh, research and, and practice, uh, for example, even for those who, who, who want to become practitioners. What should you be doing, for example, in, in, in organizations, in companies? Many people are, are talking about uh, um, digital transformation these days. Right? Have you heard this term, digital transformation? Transformação digital ou transformação digital? Do you know when we started doing digital transformation, or at least when we started discussing digital transformation in the information systems field? I've been in this field for 25 years now, right? Uh, when I was a master student in 1996, that was precisely what motivated us in information systems to perform the digital transformation of organizations, 1996. So we're talking about 25 years ago. 25 years ago, we were discussing digital transformation, right? My, my dissertation, uh, my, my master's, my, actually my master's uh, thesis was on digital transformation. We did not call it di digital transformation back then, right? Uh, that was not the name that we gave to, to the phenomenon. Uh, that's true. Uh, we, we had different names for it. We, we, I mean, we'll see over the next few weeks, I will show you some of the terms that we used at that time. But even, uh, uh, well, IT, uh, uh, let's say IT promoted uh, business, business transformation. We were already discussing how technology could uh, trigger uh, uh, digital transformation. And Donna is right. Uh, the COVID-19, let's say, was very important to, 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 let's say, to give it an extra push. But come on, did we need 25 years and a pandemic to do what was reasonable already in the 1990s? So why didn't digital transformation happen before that? Why did it take 25 years? Does anyone have a clue, or an idea of why it took 25 years for something to happen that, I mean, our, you know, scientists in the field, uh, well, we don't call ourselves scientists, but what researchers were already discussing in the 90s. Why 25 years later? Don is right, COVID. COVID was the main reason why it, it finally happened. But if we, we, if, we, if we didn't have COVID, maybe we would have to wait for 30 or 35 years before the digital transformation happened. Some authors say we would have to wait until a whole generation died, right? Marina is saying that people still trust uh, in face-to-face -face interactions. Maybe the lockdown forced this. Uh, and, and well, the, 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 lockdown, uh, the lockdown definitely forced the digital transformation, but the digital transformation doesn't mean necessarily putting people apart, right? And making, uh, mo most people, mo most companies are still working on digital transformation in a way that they, instead of bringing their customers closer to them, what they do is they put their customers apart because they put a technology in the middle that will prevent customers 
from talking directly to, to, the, to, 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 to the executives of the company, right? So the digital transformation in many cases is still being done in, the, in, a, in, in, in a wrong way. We should have the gatekeepers in industry also to say, no, you're not going to do this. Sorry, I'm going to use a bad word here. Shitty transformation here because it's going to make us less valuable than we would be if we did it in a different way. Right? So digital transformation doesn't mean making it impersonal, making it, uh, well, uh, uh, ma making it auto, uh, auto, simply automating things. We will probably, uh, the, the good digital transformation will be that one that automates tasks and activities that people do not see as very valuable anyway, or that, that people think that automation will turn into more efficient. But digital transformation also should help uh, organization, organizations become more effective in what they do. Uh, in that sense, digital transformation should, should be uh, there to bring the customers closer to the organization. Right? And, uh, and then we, when we're thinking about bringing customers closer, uh, it, it, it can't be just having more technology for the sake of having more technology. So maybe one of the reasons why it took 20, more than 25 years for digital transformation to become a buzzword and everyone talk about it, uh, it is that many people that tried the digital transformation over time did it in a wrong way. Instead of using technology to bring people together, they used technology to put them apart, to set them apart. Uh, but the thing is, uh, uh, the, the researchers that were studying uh, digital uh, transformation back in the 90s were proposing the right thing. We're proposing what, uh, what, what, companies are, uh, what the companies that are being successful in doing digital transformation are doing right now. Right? Uh, there are still a lot of companies that are doing transformations. Uh, and, and those transformations are digital in the sense that they are including technology, digital technology, but that will not lead them to success even now because they, they, they're simply doing something they were forced to do. And, and, and as the pandemic goes away, many times they are going back, right? Um, so let me see here. Um, uh, Josier said that uh, he thinks that a digital transformation still costs uh, too much and the risks are too high, right? There's a lot of too, uh, too much, too, 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 too costly and too high the risks. In fact, technology has always imposed risks because technology changes the way we do things. And when we change, we go from a status, a situation that we know, to a situation, to a situation that we don't know, right? So it's, it shouldn't be a, a jump into the dark, Right, where it's it's it shouldn't be like that. I mean, we sh we should still have good ways of, of assessing if uh, this change will lead us to a better situation or not. This was all the discussion that we were doing in information systems in the nineties. We were discussing what when is information uh, uh, the the use of information too costly. In fact, there was this guy. Uh, you, you probably you, you may have heard of. Uh, um, uh, of, uh, of this uh, paper, uh, uh, a paper by Nicholas Carr, IT doesn't matter. Right? He even played with the, the words because IT and it in English are written the same way, so it doesn't matter. IT doesn't matter, right? Uh, he wrote that in 2004, and uh, many companies still rely on that and say, well, technology is a is, is, is too expensive for the benefits that it brings. Right? It depends. Uh, it depends on the technology that you are uh, building. If you're building technology that puts people apart, for sure. If you're building technology that will make your company, and notice we, we talk a lot about companies because, in fact, information systems is in the middle of the way between uh, computer technology right and 
the uses that we can make of it. Uh, and one of the uses that we can make of that technology is try to make organizations or to, to make companies more, more, let's say, efficient. Um, so um, we still struggle with that uh, issue of, and, and, and now we're talking again, 25 years later, we're still dealing with uh, what, uh, well, Josir didn't uh, express it that way, but what we usually call the productivity paradox of investing in technology, right? People say that the investment in technology costs too much and there's a lot of risk. Um, uh, information systems is a field that studies if that's the case. In fact, we spent a lot of energy in the 90s and early 2000s showing that, well, if you do the right thing, uh, it's, not, it's not too costly. Uh, if you do the right thing, uh, the the money you spend in technology will pay off, uh, and uh, and your company is going to be successful. Again, I say we talk a lot about co uh, companies, but I think that we will even that that's something that we'll have to do with our research in information systems. We will have to decide if uh, information systems uh, is still in the future going to be talking about uh, technology in organizations or in for-profit organizations or how we plan to expand this field so that we become relevant in other areas of human life, right? There's a lot being done, for example, these days in uh, using technology to empower citizens. A lot of the research that is done in smart cities, for example, goes that way, tries to see how can we use technology to make uh, the cities in which we live better environments, better, more, more pleasant, more pleasant places to live. Does that make sense to you? Uh, that we use, we think of technology as, well, how can we use this to, to improve the quality of life in the city, right? Um, of course, uh, um, when we when we think about the use of technology, for example, even in smart cities, there are different approaches, different ways of looking at that. Uh, we can look the MBA, uh, uh, IBM way, let's say, or just put more technology there and you will succeed. Of course, IBM wants to sell technology to the mayors, to, the, to, 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 you know, to, to our representatives, because that's, that's the way they, they get their money, right? Uh, so if you if you if you look at what IBM proposes as a smart city, you will see that it's a city full of uh, new technologies to do whatever fancy uh, stuff technology allows. We do not, and and maybe that's one of the reasons why technology sometimes is costly, uh, because we use technology to amuse ourselves. It's almost entertaining. I mean, there, there are some of the, the uses of technology that we make. It's because it's possible. But, but is, is it really what we need? So we have to study that, right? Uh, sometimes, I mean, and again, information systems do not necessarily need to be um, digital information systems. Sometimes there are information systems that are much simpler uh, and that do not even use uh, uh, high tech. For example, the Japanese, when they developed the, for example, those um, manufacturing uh, processes involving Kanban, for example, uh, those uh, Kanban is an information system and it doesn't involve technology. So we shouldn't even be too concerned that our field relates to information uh, systems that relates necessarily to uh, information technology or to digital information technology. Information systems can be uh, smoke signals by, by the, the North American Indians, for example, were an information system. It was a way of telling um, their peers that there was risk or there was, uh, well, the enemy was approaching or whatever. That's an information system. Does it need to be technological? Not necessarily. So we have to think, and, and Josir is right, we have to think there when a, a, a technology is too expensive for
thinking on the you know the benefits that it will generate a technology is not valuable for the sake of the technology a technology is only valuable for the benefits it will be able to bring to us okay uh, and there are technologies that will uh, be uh, too expensive and this is why uh, authors like Nicholas Carr are still paid attention people still look at what they say because I mean, we, 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 that, that's one of the papers that we may discuss uh, during our seminars here uh, and see what were the main ideas of uh, Nicholas Carr and why was he thinking that, um, that um, you know, IT did not matter. Uh, and you will see that IT did matter, right? So, again, in, in our class, in, in and, and uh, forgive me, I'll, I'll be calling them classes here because it, because I think that they, this this is actually a program. Uh, uh, in fact, um, I don't know if uh, all of you have formally uh, already asked for registration, but whoever is here, you could be here and just saying, "Well, I'll be there every Monday morning," just to you know to have some ideas about uh, information technology and information systems. But why not doing that and already getting credits for it, right? So. Uh, uh, Two years ago, two years ago, when we started the research seminars, uh, my university here in, in Brazil said we, we can help sponsor that. Sponsor that in the sense that they, they, they say, well, you can teach this uh, uh, this course or you can organize this, uh, and uh, we will we'll consider it as a regular course. So whoever is here, uh, you will get by the end of the the, the, the semester, you will get. Um, you know this um, document saying that you have uh, attended a, co a regular course, a 45-hour course, and you have, of course, you have to. As, as one of our objectives here is generating a paper that is publishable at the end, and you will have worked on that so that I can have some sort of assessment uh, of uh, of how you. The improvement that happened over over time here. So uh, uh, each one of you, you, you can choose whatever topic in information systems to develop your 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 work. But you will. The idea is that you you develop that uh, over time. Uh, I will include here in the chat uh, a few links for you. The first one is I don't know if uh, if you have all already uh, registered. That as, as I said, some some of you. I, I know that most of the Panamanians have already sent, uh, uh, have already, uh, no, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, some of the Panamanians have already filled this form that I will, that I will just include here. Uh, others may have not yet filled it. So, uh, and, and this is important because this will allow me to uh, have you registered, formally registered uh, as if, it, if this was a course. Uh, that you can get credits for, right? Check that link. In fact, that link will send you to uh, this. Let me see if I can show you here. It will take you to this form. Okay, I just sent in the chat a link that will take you to this form. It's an application uh, form for enrollment as an external uh, student, right? Many of you have already done that. Uh, and of course, you will be if you get there. You'll be choosing the the research seminars information systems right now. Okay, maybe if if you like this and if you want to take another course uh, early next year, next year we'll have the collective intelligence and social networks uh, uh, course happening. So I need your the information that I need here is uh, because I have to th that will have to be given to the dean of the of the uh, in fact the, the business school. Uh, and uh, so that they they can enroll you in, in the in the course in a form uh, formal formal way. So why am I asking you your mother's name? Well, this is because if in in ten years from now you want to contact the university and say I, I took a course there with you, uh, and uh, for example Rogério Correa, they will want to know if Rogério Correa is this Rogério Correa who's who's asking for for a certificate. Or if it's another Rogério Correa, considering that there are many people called Rogério, and there is a chance that there is another Rogério Correa there. So these are they, they, they use for 
uh, as I wrote here, for disambiguation to make sure that the person who's asking for something uh, is that person uh, directly. And so, uh, s some other uh, information here. So, please, if you haven't yet filled this in, fill that in. Uh, again, uh, I talked to, to, to the dean of the, the school and he says he's happy to... Uh, uh, classes are starting today. Uh, I am recording this, uh, this uh, class and it will be available to, to, to you in a, in a digital platform that I will show next. Uh, uh, but he said that if, we, if, if there are people that are still interested in taking part on this, uh, uh, I, I, I can, we, we can still accept them during the week now. So if you know of anyone else who could be interested in discussing this information systems and maybe writing a paper, if we target, uh, I, I like to target AMSIS Panama next year. It would be great if we could have several Latin Americans uh, with papers that at least have the quality uh, to pass the gatekeepers uh, of uh, AMSIS Panama. Uh, as we have many Panamanians here among us, uh, it would be great if we had some three or four of you who had papers uh, accepted uh, uh, for AMSIS uh, next year, and it would be an honor for us in the, the Latin American Information System Society if that that, that happened. So, uh, if if you know of anyone else who who could be here, feel free to invite them. Uh, as I said, uh, it's important. Of course, you you will see here uh, that we do need uh, you you do need to send some uh, file here with the. Oh, this is that you need to send some identification document and you need to also send uh, here a an undergraduate de uh, degree diploma or other ev evidence of uh, uh, conclusion of undergraduate studies but in fact as I said we will have uh, and if, if the pro if a professor tells me well this undergraduate uh, wants to to take the course uh, we, we we also accept so this is the more formal thing. If you, if you think of anyone else who could be interested, in, who, who does research in an area that involves information systems, who's, who's, an, uh, who's a graduate student or whatever, uh, you can still send them the, the, this info during this week and, and we'll make sure that we get uh, people enrolled. The, the other thing, I, I'm not sure how well you see my screen there when I, when I put this screen uh, in the back, I know that Google Google Meet has uh, an option there in the, the configuration options that you can increase the quality of um, of the image that is sent by someone else, right? Uh, what I the technology that I use at my end here is uh, you're seeing whatever you're seeing there is as if it were my camera. So, and, and Google Meet usually thinks, ah, if it's a camera, I don't need uh, a very high resolution, right? But sometimes if I'm showing things at the back and if, if whatever I'm showing here is looking a little like pixels, uh, then maybe you should go to the configurations of Google Meet. Uh, it's one of the, the uh, I think it's those, those three dots that appear in the, the lower part. And uh, over there you can, um, it's there that you can there is uh, if, if you scroll the bar to the bottom it will show configurations and I think in those configurations you can uh, do some arrangements with respect to video uh, and say for example that you want the maximum uh, input resolution it, it's probably usually automatic but you can increase that to high definition 720 pixels uh, it will in uh, make, make uh, the image a little better. But anyway, uh, I'm saying that because the other material that I have to share with you is a link to our Moodle platform. Josir, you're saying anything? You can't hear me. Yes, I can hear. Okay, uh, can, you, can, can you see uh, the, the image that I'm showing with some good quality? Yes. Okay. All right. That's so, right. so uh, I will send you the link to to this uh, page as well now, uh, which is going to be the place where we will do a lot of our. I mean, 
where I will post material for you to read uh, and, and where we will do some of the discussion outside the time that we are. I mean, we'll be together here at this time, right, on, on Mondays. But whatever interaction we happen, uh, we, we want to have uh, in, in other moments, it will either happen through uh, this Moodle page that I'll be sharing with you, or uh, through some, uh, you, you see that I've even uh, created a WhatsApp group for this group to, I mean, again, a, a WhatsApp group when we're, we, we're using for academic reasons, the idea is simply uh, uh, when we have something really important, it's not to say good morning and, 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 good, and good night to, 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 to our colleagues here every day, right? It's only when, for example, if, you, if, if we discuss a topic here and then you end up seeing another paper that is, you think, well, this is exactly what we were discussing there and you want to share with the others, that's great. But it's not, it's not going to be a place where you're going to say, good morning, guys, every day, because we, we want to be a very quiet group where we only say something when it's absolutely necessary, right? This will all show up. Let me give you this other link to you. Um, hang on. Here, this is the Moodle link. Uh, check if it works. I believe uh, when you when you try to get to this link, it will, and, and by the way, if in, anyone is, is watching this uh, on their cell phones and wants, wants to do this later, you can do it later, no problem. But just remember that you have to copy the, whatever we're doing in the chat here, because after we finish, this is going to be gone, right? Um, what will happen here when you uh, click on this link is that it will ask you to register in our Moodle platform. So you'll probably have to do some uh, quick registration there. Uh, and as soon as you finish that registration, uh, it will ask you for an access code to get to the course itself, right? I don't know if anyone is doing that right now, but uh, if you're doing it, please, is it asking for the, the, the access code? Did, could you get to that situation? I want to do this step by step because this is going to be an important way of us to communicate. And again, if there is anyone who cannot do this right now, just make sure to copy uh, this uh, link so that you can do later. Rogério, I believe that you already had access to the the um, the Moodle, right? Uh, has has it asked you for a, an access code? Uh, have you tried any access codes there? Which one did you try? Because one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. All right. Yeah. And, and it worked. Right, of course. And it worked. Did it work? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So, so uh, because I, I, I'm asking him because I didn't know. I usually keep very secret um, access codes. So I'm sharing it here with you. The access code here is this very difficult one, one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? Um, the idea is not to make this uh, all that exclusive anyway. Uh, uh, after you, you and, and please, if anyone else has been able to get there, tell me because then we, we know that we can move forwards. Josip, did it work for you? No, Mari. Uh, Yes, uh, Mari is asking if she has to create uh, a new user and password. Yes, uh, the first time you have to do that. And I have to tell you, uh, the our Moodle is a little annoying because it wants to know. It's, it's almost, they, they think that this has to be something like a, a bank, a, a bank a password, right? Uh, so they ask you to have capital letters and small letters and they want different signals. My way of doing that, whenever they, they ask for special characters, I do, well, capital letters, I think of whatever password I use for the internet, simple one, and I, okay, I put the first one in capital, then I write the rest, and then at the end I put an exclamation mark, right? This is my way of remembering silly passwords. 
Uh, so if you ever forget your password for, for, for our Moodle here, I will tell you, well, remember that I told you, use whatever password you want there, put the first letter in, in a cap as a capital letter, uh, and at the end put an exclamation mark, and then it will work. You will, you will need uh, this uh, pa uh, password that you create now, the, the, the user and passwords, uh, whenever you want to get to our Moodle. So it's take, take a note of it uh, if you think you will not remember it. Did it work for you guys? I mean, Rogério could do it fast because he, he already had access to our Moodle platform because he's taken other courses there. Mari says it's a yes, okay. All right, you will see uh, there is not a lot there yet. Uh, in fact, uh, we, I, I, I will be planning the idea is to plan this and go depending, go with you depending on the speed and, and, and that this group is able to, right? So uh, we're doing something different to what we did in, in previous uh, semesters. Uh, so, uh, we, we will go as far as we can as a group. Um, what you will see here, well, we have a logo here with uh, all the universities that participated on this in, in previous years. Uh, some, of, some guys from these universities, from uh, the University of Rio de Janeiro, from the University of Sao Paulo, uh, from the University of uh, ABC, is another region here in, in, in close to Sao Paulo. Uh, well, here we have the Universidade de Panamá. That's where uh, Dona Roper is. Uh, we have uh, here Universidad de la República Uruguaya, where uh, uh, Bujinho is, another colleague of ours. The Univer Universidad Católica del Norte, where Aurora Sanchez is. Uh, so these are all universities that are somehow related, and, and we may have professors from these universities coming and, and giving us a talk. Although this semester we haven't planned it that way yet, because our main goal is to make sure that we make you understand information systems and write good papers in information systems, right? So this is just uh, uh, what we planned as a syllabus is here. You can have a look at it afterwards. It doesn't say much, again, because, uh, as I said, we will go as far as we can. And I, 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 I plan to push each one of you to your own limits or to, to or to where you want to go. So there will be people that will be more uh, focused in, in, in making sure that you, you you are able to please the gatekeepers and others that may be at intermediate level. Uh, we'll, we'll take each one to where they can go. Notice here that we have uh, a, well, the Google Meet is whenever, I mean, we're always going to use the same link that we use today to get to Google Meet. But if you forget it, if you lose it or whatever, you just get go to, to, to Moodle and if you click here, it will take you to where we are right now, right, in, in Google Meet. And this is the, oh, and, and I think I've clicked there. No, I didn't want to do that. Let me see if I can go back. Okay. Uh, and then we also have a WhatsApp group here. Okay, and this watch, WhatsApp group, uh, it is the Research Seminars in Information Systems 2022. If you click there, you will be in the group again. Uh, well, I know that sometimes there are people that, uh, in, in, you know that information systems in, is an area where we have a lot of people that are very enthusiastic about some of our technologies and others that are very critical about the technologies that we use, right? So, uh, and, and I respect both groups, right? Uh, we, we do have to be critical about some of the technologies we use because the same way as we shape new technologies, our new technologies shape us. And uh, I, I am a firm believer that WhatsApp is one of those technologies that shape us uh, more than we shape the technology itself. And I have to say, I, I don't like the technology very much, but I like this use that we will make here, right? Whenever we, we have something that is important, we say there, for example, if it ever happens, there, there will be one week uh, in, uh, I think it's in October or November, that we may have to do this class in a different time uh, because I'll be teaching a master's program in France 
and they have not given me the 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 times yet. I, I I'll be fi physically there. I'll be fi it's it's a face to face. I'll I'll be traveling to France to to teach that course. But uh, although I have already asked them what will be the times of, of our classes to make sure that they do not collide uh, with with uh, or, or with with other activities that I already have here, they have not given it to me yet. So, for example, if they only give me that. Uh, three days in advance that's when I'm going to tell you here in the whatsapp group guys our class on whatever day in, in October I think it's October uh, will be in a different time or we'll skip that and do it in a different day or whatever right so whatsapp is going to be uh, important for urgent messages or for or for things that you think that could support your colleagues in, in their whatever what in what they're doing um, well, uh, today the idea is simply to have an introduction to, to our topic and to make you uh, you feel sure, uh, either sure that you want to be here, or maybe there will be someone who will say, "Wow, I don't know, this is not for me." Uh, send me, a, and then you can 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 send me a, a a WhatsApp message saying, "I'm not going to to be with you for the rest of the semester because I thought it was one thing and I." realize it's a different thing there's no problem with that uh, again I think we can all uh, learn something from this um, but I understand that some of you uh, for, for some of you this may be completely new and and maybe it, I don't know Ho hopefully it's it's going to be interesting for everyone but uh, I would like uh, you to if, if anyone uh, after today decides no this is not for me uh, um, just tell me uh, because then I will prevent uh, stop that enrollment process uh, at the university because maybe in, in 10 years from now you decide to take another course here at, I mean very unlikely for some for someone from a, a different state or a different country to take another course at my university but then, and then they will say well you failed this because you you gave up in the middle so we cannot enroll you in a, we don't want that okay uh, uh, one of the 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 reasons that some of you may have come to this uh, course is uh, was the format that it was run uh, in the previous years, right? Uh, Marina, for example, uh, she asked me about the course about a month uh, ago, uh, and I had already given her some instructions of how to enroll and every, everything, but she was probably thinking of those uh, speeches that we had every week. Uh, we so I would I would like to share with you at least uh, the speeches that we had from previous years because we're very honored to to have had uh, in 2020 and 2021 during the pandemic uh, uh, it was very easy for us to um, you know just call our other colleagues anywhere in in Latin America or in fact in any part of the world and ask them well is there a topic that you would like to discuss with us in our seminars and people would say sure and they would come and, and, and do it and I mean there, there are some uh, uh, in this uh, list here of uh, talks that we had in previous years there are some lists uh, some, some talks by very uh, interesting people for example uh, we had uh, Efrain McLean Efrain McLean is one of the authors uh, of uh, books that you have probably uh, or some of you have had access to in information systems uh, and Efrain McLean is, is nowadays one of the, our most senior researchers in fact he's already retired he's an emeritus uh, researcher in, in a professor and researcher in Georgia uh, but he's one of the people that we interview we, we, we had uh, uh, in, in, in our research seminars in previous years so if you click here in these links it will show you uh, the it's not show. Hopefully, it will show. I think it's uploading, uh, or not? Yeah, it is. It, it's uploading my YouTube here. Uh, it will show you the the all, all the the talks that we had in previous years. It was again great because we had great researchers coming and talking about what they were the, the research that they were involved with, but at the same time we had that feeling that. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, our researchers in Latin America thought, well, great, uh, I understand what this guy is doing, but how can I replicate that uh, with the, let's say, um, 
well, with the constraints that I have here in my own uh, environment uh, that are much different to what uh, the, the situation that this, this person experiences in, in his or her own um, uh, uh, country, right? Uh, so, but anyway, I, I invite you to, as, as one of the, the, the things that we'll have to do is think of a, an information systems topic that interests us so that we do some research in that topic uh, consider uh, uh, watching some of these uh, videos and uh, on a topic that maybe you find interesting. For example, uh, again here I have for 2001. If you're uh, if you're interested in well, some people are interested in responsible research. What does that mean? Research that it's it's sort of a, a research that leads to a product. The the, the the, the result of your research is something that makes the world a better world, for example, right? Uh, so there is this, this interesting talk by Stacy uh, Peter here on responsible research in information systems. Uh, we have here this, uh, well, uh, Stacy is, is North American, then we have Alvaro Arenas from Spain uh, discussing business models for data sharing. If you're, if you're thinking about using information systems to share data, consider, you know, watching uh, Alvaro's uh, talk here. And then we had someone, uh, Zandra Balbino, talking about co-creation. Uh, co-creation is when the, the customers or the suppliers help a company uh, design or even manufacture its own product, right? So if, you're, if that's a topic that calls your attention, watch what Zandra Balbino had to say here. Uh, online education, uh, uh, after COVID, I mean, if there is one industry that has been shaken by by COVID, was education, right? I mean, we, we had to reinvent ourselves from one day to the next and start uh, teaching classes online, something that most universities didn't even consider as a possibility. In fact, I have to admit to you that before the pandemic, I already had some online students at my university um, uh, as, as I told you, I teach this, uh, this master program in France uh, and there I have many students from, from Europe but also from India and from China uh, and once a student had asked me when I was there, well, I would like to take another course with you, Alexandre, uh, how can I do that? And I told him, well, you're very welcome, just uh, I, I work in a, in a public university and public universities in Brazil are free, so just show up, up, up go, go to Brazil, and uh, I'm sure that you will be able to enroll in as many courses as, as you wish there. And then this guy told me, you know, but I didn't want to go to Brazil. I, I can't go to Brazil. I can't afford going to Brazil. Uh, can't I do it online? And that was 2016 or so. And my answer was going to be no, but as I was going to say no, I thought, why not? I mean, considering that we already have the technology. Remember, I, I was, to some extent, I was here saying that companies are doing business transformation now because of the pandemic. And I'm saying, well, we were studying that since the, the, the 1990s. And then as a researcher in information systems, I said, gee, we, we already have the technology that allows us to do different things. And we don't do it simply because we are exactly like the companies that we are saying that are reactive to or resistant to, to change. And so I said, yes, next semester you will be able to, to be in one of my classes uh, online. I didn't know exactly how I was going to, to do that yet. But what I had to do is I had to have this student enrolled. It was an Indian student, the first, the first student of mine who, who did this this way. I had to have him enrolled as if he were a physical, a face-to-face -face student in Brazil, uh, and then I, I was in a face-to-face -face class with all, all my other students there, the, 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 the students at UTFPR, and this guy was, you know, uh, at that stage he was watching, we were broadcasting in real time through YouTube, uh, and then when he had questions he would ask through WhatsApp, right? That was before the, the Zoom and, 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 and Google Meet uh, era, at least uh, the technology was surely already there, but we were not aware that this could be used the way we're using it now, right? So again, 
Sometimes the, 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 the digital transformation takes longer simply because we don't think that it's necessary. Right? Uh, well, the fact that I had that student in, in 2016 or 17 allowed at the university to the year later say, Alex, you can have as many students as, as, as you wish uh, in that format, uh, except that you will have to teach from our regular class in, in, in Curitiba because we also have our face-to-face -face students. And I said, okay, no problem. We, we did that. Uh, and, 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 uh, but you know what started happening? Uh, I started having, so for some of my classes I had uh, five students from the university and some other 20 students from other universities. And then the university said, well, uh, maybe if, if it's easier to, to do this uh, simply online, do it online because uh, our students can benefit from it regardless of where they are. So we need some time to, to shift in online education that uh, Jeffrey Dick was talking about in this uh, uh, in this uh, speech here is uh, one way in which our area, our field of information systems is having to assess itself. We have to think of new ways of doing our business that is education, right? I mean, m many of you are also uh, professors uh, or are willing to become professors and the world of education is not going to be the same as it was before um, COVID. And in fact, it's not going to be uh, the same as it were before. An Indian student studying in France questioned a professor and said, why does this have to be face-to-face? Uh, -face? Cannot you, can't you have a camera there and I can uh, uh, participate in a class from a distance, right? Sometimes we need I don't like to call students customers, right? Uh, but considering that we are in a business here as well, it's it's, it's the bu the business of education. It may not be a we, we may not do that for as a university. We may not do that for for money. But still, if we if we cannot uh, provide our students with value, it, uh, there's no sense in education. So education will have to change. And and and, and Jeffrey Dick was discussing this here. This is another area of interest of information systems. Uh, adoption, acceptance, and, and I'm going through this list mainly because, of course, one of the things that we'll have to do in this class is we'll have to figure out something that interests us and that we want to study and that relates to, to, relates to the topic of information systems. So here are some examples of what uh, things that people are studying. Uh, here we had uh, a talk on adoption, acceptance, acceptance and uh, appropriation of information technology. Uh, this has been a topic that we have been discussing in information systems forever because many times there is someone taking a decision, right? The boss, the, the, the owner of the company decides on buying uh, some, some system. And then uh, that, uh, after that person has adopted, opt, opted for that system, everyone else has to, let's say, accept it, right? I mean, if the boss has already bought, now we have to use it because otherwise the the boss will be in a bad situation and we are going to be in a bad situation because when the, the boss is unhappy, the, the workers are also unhappy, right? Uh, so what happens first? Uh, adoption, acceptance, appropriation of a system. This is uh, something that uh, Ricardo Engelbert was discussing here. We have some theory on, uh, on adoption and acceptance that has been around for quite a while and that, that theory needs to be challenged because when our first authors uh, were discussing adoption and acceptance of information technology, they were talking about things that were sort of um, a synonym, right? Adoption and acceptance meant the same because the person who was adopting was the same that would have to accept the technology. Uh, or if not, let's say, you know, when, when, uh, when, uh, when, when uh, Fred Davis started studying uh, adoption on, of information technology in the, the 80s, uh, he was studying the way people were using microcomputers in organizations that, okay, it was the boss who bought the microcomputers, but then when the, the box with the microcomputer arrived at the company, he said, well, he or she, the, 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 the boss said to, to the, the workers, I've been told that computers may be the next stuff, the, the next important stuff in organization. 
I bought this. Whoever wishes to deal with it, feel free, right? Uh, so in fact, the 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 boss had adopted a technology, and later on, the the workers, let's say the the, uh, the employees, could also adopt because they, if they said no, I, I I prefer to to keep working with my typing machine here, the boss would say okay, maybe someone else will be interested in that. So at that stage, uh, everyone was adopting a technology, and there was a mixture of terms and and in fact, if you read the literature of adoption and, and, and acceptance of technology, you will see that it's a real mess. It's, they, they use the terms as if they were synonyms. Uh, and, and then uh, Ricardo Engelbert uh, tries to clarify this here. Uh, then we have here, I, I know, I know about the charge talking about automated codes. Uh, uh, we are automating things uh, and, 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 and we are automating coding and scoring uh, of text documents. So. I mean, we, each, each time we, we have more computers, well, reading, understanding, we have all the artificial intelligence uh, uh, coming to, to reality in our real lives. In the past, I mean, artificial intelligence has been around since the 60s at least, but only now it gets to real mortal humans uh, to, to use in, 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 in organizations, right? Uh, and all, and all but a charger here is uh, discussing the automation of uh, the decision about well uh, the, the computer reads a text and has to to figure out if that text is favorable or favorable or unfavorable to whatever idea and so on and so forth uh, issues of gender uh, they, they're always oh sorry didn't want to click here but uh, just showing you that uh, sorry. Uh, that gen gender is always a topic in information systems uh, and if we think uh, uh, it, it needs to be because we still have technology is still a matter that, that attracts many more male uh, students and professionals than female uh, students and professionals and there's no reason for that I mean uh, so there is a, a, a huge discussion on that topic uh, Again, digitalization uh, and other trends uh, for business education goes a little bit in, in the, towards the same direction as the, the education in COVID. Where digital transformation meets collective intelligence, collective intelligence is my topic of research. Uh, so here, this, this is me talking about collective intelligence and, and, and ways we, we, we believe that we will, we, we will or we, we, we could become more intelligent together than we are individually by using technology that connects us. Of course, there is a, a, a great debate also if we are becoming more intelligent or more stupid because uh, the same way as our technology allows us to connect and get to better ideas, it also has, at least until now, has allowed us to connect in, in bubbles, right? And echo chambers where we only talk to people that think the same way we do uh, and uh, we think that the rest of the universe is uh, made of stupid people and uh, that we are the only ones who, who know it right. right? Uh, notice, uh, so uh, the future of work, is there a future for work? Fred Niederman, uh, who's uh, one of our researchers in the US also, who deals with, with that topic, is considering here what we will be doing uh, the more we 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 push into uh, artificial intelligence, data science, and 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 all those technologies that are now invading an area that uh, uh, until very recently was very human, that was decision making, right? I mean, we have since, since the beginning of automation, we have decided those, uh, we we have automated those if then else kinds of uh, uh, decisions, right? Uh, if, th if, if this happens, go this way. If that happens, go the other way. That's something that computers have always done. Uh, but the more strategic decisions are getting to computers each time more often. And, and Fred Niederman then is discussing a little that topic, artificial intelligence, uh, research on the IT occupational culture how do we, uh, uh, people that work with computers, are we, a, let's say, a tribe? 
do we have our own, um, let's say, culture that is different to people in other departments or, or other areas in the, the organizations? So what, what, what I'm, uh, what I'm uh, trying to show you here is that um, there, there, there has been a lot of discussions here, but the, the discussion that we, we had in previous research seminars was each one brings their own topic, right, and talks about their topics. I invite you to, to you know, check those topics. There, there are even the topics for 2020, uh, 2020 here also, right? I invite you to go through those topics to see. It's, it's not the, an exhaustive list of, uh, of um, let's say, of, of topics to be studied in information systems, but it, it at least shows you and, and shows to those who are new to the field some areas that, well, it seems that people are interested in this topic. So maybe this is something that I, that I would like to, to talk about, right? Um, and, uh, well, uh, I, 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 I've talked a lot. I, I want to make this as interactive as we can uh, in the future. That will depend a lot on you, I mean, getting and I think uh, also Antonio now that opened his his camera as well, that you 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 in 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 our next classes that you can uh, open your cameras whenever possible. Uh, I have any problems with my camera. Yeah, no, but <laughs> yeah. no, but now it's working. And 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 again, uh, it I, I tell you that it's it's easy. It's it's much easier for me when I see you guys. I I claim uh, I'm enthusiastic of technology in many ways. And at the same time, I'm one of those people that are very critical about technologies. I think that we we have to find ways that we use technology to our benefit, and we don't yes, want to understand, be understand yeah, that. And we don't want to be used by the technologies. But what I say is, for a class, for for this interaction among us, uh, I think that the camera the camera open means the technology is favoring us because. I can more see interactive, what you're... more interactive. Exactly, face I, I... to face is uh, permit to change. Yeah, uh, see, see Dor 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 Doris right now she's she's in a dangerous situation. We don't even want to see her there. She, in fact, <laughs> pay attention to what we're doing here, but pay attention to the traffic as well. <laughs> uh, but 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 see, it, it makes it, it makes a uh, uh, more interesting. And I want you to get to know not just me. I want you to get to know each other. And of course, if it's just a picture of a, a person, that 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 makes it less uh, interesting for you to get engaged. We we will. Uh, I told you that there is the gatekeepers of in, of of any society and any any community. There are those gatekeepers that will tell us if our papers are good or not to be presented at, at ISLA or AMSIS or whatever. But before we get there, we can uh, create our own gatekeepers. We, we can even sh share our own uh, work, you know, and, and have our colleagues give us opinions on the quality of what we did. And it's usually, the problem is usually not with the, the, the quality in terms of content. I would say in general, the problem is with the format. Sometimes part of what we want to say is in the paper and the other part is in our head. It didn't get to the paper and then people who read it do not understand it or, or lack some information that is absolutely necessary. If we have some colleagues that can read our papers before we submit them to a conference, those colleagues can be the first gatekeepers and they will tell us you know, uh, Alexandre, I, 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 I did not understand what you wanted to say here. And they give us an opportunity to improve the quality of our writing before it gets to the mean uh, gatekeepers of the conference that will say, no, your work doesn't interest us, right? Someone has already helped you polish your work and when it gets there, they will say, yes, this is exactly what we wanted. So for us to build this uh, here, uh, you have to see each other as well. So this is this is one of the reasons why I, I, I tell you, the more you can uh, uh, get, uh, well, try to to have a mic, try to have a way of interacting uh, with with us uh, here. Okay, and uh, okay, very very quickly with respect to what we will be doing next week. Next week, I want to tell you what information systems is. Oh well, not me telling you. I will. We will discuss 
what um, the association of information systems and the association of com computer machinery and the I3, uh, uh, how, how do they call it? I3E, uh, this is the engineering, well, the, 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 the engineers association, how, how these guys are trying to figure out the mess that computer, the, 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 that all the, the professions related to computers is. We have computer scientists, we have computer engineers, we have bachelors in information systems, we have bachelors in IT, we have software engineers. Uh, well, nowadays we're start, starting to have uh, programs in cybersecurity. We may have data scientists uh, in the future as a, a bash, a, 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 an undergraduate program. There's so many different possible perspectives to, to, to the way technology uh, intrudes our lives these days that uh, it was very good that these associations here uh, um, decided to write a recommendation for computing curricula uh, around the world, right? So what I want you to do is uh, uh, from now until next week, I want you to, uh, well, get to this PDF here that I just clicked uh, and uh, it will take a while so it sh until it shows. And you will see, this is the, the document that I was talking about, right? You will see that it has only 205 pages. Uh, it's very easy, very, very a, a small document. Don't worry, you know what you'll do? You come here, you control F it, and you, you, you will write information systems there. And you will start looking. I mean, you, you can, if you have the time, browse it more, more, uh, I mean, read it, uh, read as much as, as it interests you. But if you just start looking for the words information systems and, and reading around it, for example, well, uh, oh, see here, there's a, a topic here. We, we can already see that they are saying that the compu computing discipline, see, they're, they're claiming that the computer discipline involves computer engineering, computer science, cybersecurity, information systems, information technology, Software engineering, data science. Ah, okay. See, I, I didn't read anything, but I already have an idea that information systems is part of this larger environment here. And uh, and I keep going, right? Uh, and then uh, and 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 then I'll just 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 get, try to get uh, an idea of how information systems is different to the other professions related to to. To, to computer science or, or, or to computers, let's say. I, I wouldn't say computer science, to, 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 to technology or to digital technology uh, in our lives, right? Try to get this understanding and we will be discussing that based on this paper, uh, based, based on this document here, all right? Uh, this is important uh, to us right now because, of course, if we want to think of how to write papers on information systems, first we have to figure out what's the difference between information systems and other fields in, in computing, right? Uh, so so that, that's our starting point. And, uh, and then we'll have a discussion uh, uh, based on, on that, okay? Uh, another thing that you will see is that I, the way I, I, I've, I've planned our Moodle, uh, you will see that for every class, we have well we will have the material to read for that class and then we'll have a button that will not work at first that is a button where we will include the recording of our class after we have the class okay and basically this is so that uh, whoever comes next year uh, or the year after uh, can have access to this right um, you may be concerned then and say uh, say Alex asks me to open my camera and now he's recording everything and everyone will, you know, uh, see me here. Well, don't worry. What I record is my camera and the images that I show you. So basically what I'm recording all the time is what you're seeing of me, right? I will never be recording uh, you. Uh, of, of course, I will be recording your voice because when you ask something or when you 
when you when you say something that that uh, all the audio is recorded but the video uh, 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 I, I, I will be, because I, I want you to, to, to be in, in, in I mean I mean I want you to be in the class here I want you to be together with us but I don't I don't want you to be shy and say oh no today my I didn't comb my hair the way I should or whatever uh, I don't know people get concerned about the don't worry about that uh, uh, and and, it and that will not show up in the, in the video right so uh, so you will see that there is always uh, this um, there, there will be a link for where we say YouTube here that is, is the recording of our class so after we finish here uh, if if the recording for today worked fine you will see that I will include here that for for the first for the first uh, topic here I will include uh, a link to the video of, of this conversation that we had today, right? Uh, any questions for now, guys? Uh, any ideas? Any? This is something that we'll build from scratch. So uh, it's what whatever you say will be taken into account in my pre preparation for what we'll be doing uh, over the next uh, weeks. Thank you, Marina, for also opening your camera. Uh, so, Marina, in your case, this is going to be a little different from the previous ones, right? Not, uh, not, not, not necessarily. We will not have the speakers talking every every week. It's going to be our group. Uh, we may bring someone at, at some stage. If you say, "Well, I would like to," uh, let's say we're discussing a topic. I'd like to have the. We, sometimes we even discuss a paper that was written by some author. And uh, well, I can go and invite this person to come and talk to us. Uh, I, I here, as, as we say here in Brazil, one thing that we know in advance is that the 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 know we already have, right? So if you say, well, we're we're, we're going to discuss, uh, uh, um, let's say, a uh, topic like uh, what could that be? Um, um, uh, uh, design science research, for example, right? And then we have in our community we have uh, Havner, who's the guy who wrote about that the most. And then uh, we're discussing here design science research because we think it's a an interesting topic for for us to to include in our in our portfolio of tools to to write papers. And then we say, oh, it would be good if Havner could have a talk to us. And then I will write him an email and ask him. Do you have the time to spend some minutes with us here? And if he says well, yes, he'll be with us. Uh, but uh, what what I'm planning this uh, this time is a much closer group. It's us and uh, maybe some uh, eventually someone uh, else from from the Latin American community. But our goal here is to make sure that this group here ends up being the authors of papers in AMSIS 2023. And that we are all proud to have a large group of uh, uh, authors presenting at that at that conference. Okay. Again, uh, questions, uh, any remarks? No, are we fine? All right. Is anyone already thinking about giving up? I hope not. I hope. I I I know that sometimes I speak fast, even in English. But again, think that if you're if you're understanding what I'm saying, that's enough. Your questions can be in Portuguese, English, Spanish, or whatever. All right, so hope to see you next week. If anyone, if there is anyone who has not uh, uh, filled in that form for enrollment yet, please do. I need that so that I can pass it to, to, to the dean of, uh, of our school there so that you're, you're formally registered. Uh, if you think that there is anyone else who could be interested in being part of this group? Uh, there is still time. Just uh, just give them the links uh, and uh, so that they can enroll during this week still, because next week, uh, I mean, more than a week, I cannot uh, convince my dean to to keep this open. But for now, if there is, I mean, I always think that one of the beauties of our of technologies is that if we have a group here with uh, how many we are, uh, 13, 14 people. Uh, I mean, if we if if we are 18 or 22, it doesn't doesn't uh, it, it's the same effort that we'll have to do, right? So it's I I, I I don't mind at all, and in fact I I like it. 
So if you think that there is anyone else who could uh, be interested, invite them uh, to be here next week. Already give them the links because they will be able to see what we did today in, in, in the Moodle. All right? Okay, so see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. See you.